Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm reviewing Blonde. That's a new uh, movie on Netflix. It's a movie about Marilyn Monroe uh, starring Anna Darmus. Uh, now, people might be, you might be a little confused about it. You might think this is like a straight up biography. Well, it's, it's warning that it's not. And it also is a very explicit movie. It's rated NC-17. Um, so basically, this is loose. I would say it's kind of loosely based on Marilyn Monroe's life. Um, it starts with her as a child. Um, she did kind of uh, grow up in a broken home. Um, she never knew who her father was. And her mother uh, had paranoid delusions, schizophrenia. Uh, in fact, in the, one of the beginning scenes there, um, since her mother, uh, it's in her life, she said, like, you know, she'd be kept in a drawer instead of a crib because they're they poor. And then, and then and later on, um, her uh, mother tried to drown her in a tub, accusing her, saying that she drove, because she was born, she drove her father away. And that's why they, they were so destitute. Um, so her so mother is committed to an institution, which, by the way, it was factual for the real Marilyn Monroe's life. Um, and then it goes on to her when she started getting into modeling and then when she got stardom. Um, that's kind of, to me personally, that's where kind of the real, I mean, there's, there's definitely loosely based stuff, but that's kind of where the realism really ends there because really in this movie, it really gets into her mental state. Um, it gets into like, uh, how she, she has daddy issues. And of course she had mother issues too, because her mother, uh, was committed because she was, became an orphan after her mother was committed. Um, and so... Uh, and so she had to kind of she had to work out with that and then um so basically she and she, this really movie really emphasizes that she's missed her father her entire life and so any man a sub substance in her life like her agent or her husband she calls him daddy so it kind of gives like a somewhat of a really kind of creepy feel to it and then also as well too um it, in this the way that she was having she's like having delusions so she's seeing things like with the picture of her father she sees him like talking to her and she sounds like she imagines getting all these letters from her long lost father and she's obsessed to find out who he really is. And the thing is, you don't know if this really happened to the real Marilyn Monroe or not. Um, I mean, it kind of does through her life, goes through like her major movies, like, you know, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and Some Like It Hot. And and it shows that she really kind of hated those because she felt like they kind of exploited her as a sex, uh, a sex idol where she felt like she was um, more than that. Um, so, I mean, there are aspects of this movie that are good. I mean, Anna Armas gives a good performance, although at times her accent, her Cuban accent does slip through. So that kind of, it kind of pulled me out of the movie a little bit. Um, but I mean, I, as I really can't recommend this movie because it is, I, I guess it's, it's pretty exploitative. Um, there, it's very graphic. There's a lot of nudity. Um, there's a lot of sex scenes, graphic sex scenes. Uh, there's a lot of rape that happens now. I mean, it's a lot of that is factual because like, especially when she started out, um like she was if she wanted a role the uh, producer the world's like okay she has to have sex with the producer and the, the producer rape her and unfortunately as we know from history that is pretty factual of what happened in, in hollywood um but part of the i think a lot of this movie does go really too far especially like the rape scenes there are uh see, abortion scenes where she's like going through having to go through forced abortion and the angles they take um they take some like really uncouth angles um and it's like it's very and i think it just totally preys on her mental instability and it kind of i think this director like really hyped that up this that negativity of her well-known mental issues uh which eventually led to her led, led to her death um and her overdose on prescription pills uh i think he really overdoes that he overplays that and he kind of skips over a lot in her life that that paints the opposite picture like she did a lot of puzzles in her life she started her own production company to fight it against the studios. She was a very positive ally for gay and lesbian rights. Um, but of course, uh, and a lot of those stuff uh, is just kind of glossed over in this movie. It seems like all, all the salacious stuff is ramped up. Now this was based on a novel. So you think, so it's hard to say if the novel was really autobiographical about Marilyn Monroe or if it's the same, in the same vein that it just play, it's kind of a little bit of fantasy where it plays up the negative salacious aspects of her life um and in a way it just kind of continues to exploit her even in death so yeah I, and and it is a very long movie too it's almost three hours so it, it it definitely does drag at points and there's especially there's like a lot of like it, like it's been so much time on this affair she has with these two actors which 
we don't know for is I don't know if we're, I tried researching this. I didn't were in fact that that ever happened. I mean, obviously, and then of course he had you know go over her affair with GFK and everything, and even that's very exploited too because there's a very graphic sex scene in there. Um, and there's a lot of in this movie, a lot of nudity, a lot of graphic sex scene, and I'm seeing with what she was given, Anna Armas did a really good job. I, and I also got to say too that the cinematography was really great in this movie too. So I got to give it that. But I mean, this movie does earn the NC-17, and all in all, I don't think it, it's just not a good movie about Marilyn Monroe. It does feel exploitative. It feels like it kind of uh, waters her down to just a sex object, and it makes her look come out as neurotic. Uh, which I don't think she was in real life. I mean, she definitely had her mental issues, but not to the extent that is in this movie. And I think it really just hypes it up for kind of um, exploitative state. And I think, you know, you could say it's artistic license, but sometimes artistic license goes too far. I mean, it kind of reminded me of the movie of Spencer about uh, Princess Diana. I did not like that movie for the same reason because it made her look like delusional, like she was uh, seeing things that were not there. Um, and... And, it, and of course, the movie, too, of course, we all know about her eating disorder. It, like, it really ramped that up. So, like, every time she ate, she had to throw up. And it really it went, it really took it to the really kind of far degree where it did felt, like, exploitative and not an actual reflection of who the actual person was. So, um, I don't know if there was a trend about famous women being, uh, movies being covered by male directors where it comes out feeling kind of exploitative and very kind of one-sided and not a complete portrait of who the actual who the actual woman was so in that vein i think this this is the same as blonde so i mean while there's definitely some good aspects of this movie it's uh it, it well acted in a lot of parts and that cinematography is great um you know especially the part where they do um you know the the subway grade scene but oh even that said the part where the, the famous her famous scene where she was on top of the subway grate and her dress was up i mean he lingered for like the, the camera lingers for like a good minute or two getting shots of her panties. So I'm like, was that really necessary? It kind of, it you know, it felt like a guy just behind the camera is giggling like he was in college or something, you know? And it's like, okay, I, come on. So as for those many reasons where the, I think the choice is made in this, and I don't think it was just a well-rounded picture of, of Mary Monroe, and it very much kind of definitely dipped in the sleaze and uh, exploitative at times that I, I can't really recommend this movie. And it, it does feel long. So if you really have to check it out, fine. But uh, there's other times I just don't think this is a good movie. So anyways, everyone, that's my review of Blonde on Netflix. Uh, if you Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you've seen it, then let, let uh, put a comment below and tell me know what you think. All right, everyone, thank, take care.